In this lesson we're going to be moving on to the the newer parts of this next unit. We're now done our review of grade 10 material uh, but you're going to see a lot of familiar concepts as we move forward here. This first one you can see there's a reference here to completing the square and the idea of finding maximum and minimum values. All of these are things that you've done before so this is still more review than anything else of grade 10 material. Now when we talk about completing the square, completing the square is the process that we use to change a quadratic equation from standard form over to vertex form. Vertex form is particularly useful uh, because it gives us the vertex of the parabola. So there are some pieces of information in here. The first one is the actual location of the vertex and that is given by the h and k values. The h is the x-coordinate of the vertex and the k is the y-coordinate of the vertex. From there we also take a look at the a value which is known as the leading coefficient and if the a value is positive that means that the parabola opens up. So a parabola that opens up might look like this. So we would have our vertex down here. A parabola that opens up this vertex represents the lowest point on that parabola. That's why we say it's a minimum. If, on the other hand, we have an a value that is negative, then in that case we would have a parabola that would look like this, and the vertex would be here, and so we would have a maximum value there. It's a little counterintuitive, but a, a quick little sketch or just visualizing what this means when a parabola opens up or down should clarify that for you. The k value, which is the y coordinate of the vertex, is also referred to as the optimal value. And the optimal value is just another way, it's just a single word that really means either the maximum or the minimum value. So the optimal value is the highest or the lowest value contained in the parabola depending on the direction of opening. And then the last part the h value from this vertex form, that's the x-coordinate of the vertex itself, and that also represents where the maximum or minimum occurs. And for both parabolas, whether they open up or they open down, that is going to represent what's known as the axis of the curve. And so that's also very important because the axis of the, of the curve represents where the symmetry is for the parabola. So let's go ahead and, and do some algebra on this. So I've got a couple of examples here where I say to complete the square, but I'm specifically interested in completing the square using fractions. Now, I'm, I'm saying to use fractions here, but what I'm actually interested in are something known as exact values. Exact values are non-decimals with no rounding. It's possible to have exact values using decimals, and we're going to talk about that in a moment, but it is often preferable to work with fractions. So if you have either remembered this or you've been following along with the review, the way that we complete the square, we first of all start by looking at these first two terms. So essentially the quadratic term, x squared, and the linear term, x to the 1, and then the first thing we want to do is we want to factor out the leading coefficient of the quadratic term. And when I do that, I end up with x squared, which is my goal. I want to create 1x squared inside the bracket. And as we've been talking about factoring, factoring is a division process. So when I factor out this 3, then what's left behind is going to actually be 2 thirds x. And then I leave the constant term alone and it just stays on the outside of the bracket. So there's step one. Step two, I'm now going to complete the square. So I'm going to stay with x squared plus two-thirds x and then what I need to do is I need to figure out so I want to turn this into a perfect square. So that means I'm going to need, inside my, um, inside my bracket, I'm going to need to find the number. So the question becomes, 
what number should I put here that's going to result in this being a perfect square? And the way that you do that is you take this term and you divide it by 2. So 2 thirds divided by 2 is the same thing as 2 thirds multiplied by a half. And 2 thirds multiplied by a half, you can see I divide out those 2's, I end up with 1 third. Now I take this value, which is 1 third, and I square it, which comes up here and becomes plus 1 ninth. We're always going to add whatever we get here, we're always going to add. But I'm not allowed to just make 1 ninth appear out of nowhere, so I also have to subtract 1 ninth. And as you can see, positive 1 ninth minus 1 ninth, well that's equal to 0. So I haven't changed anything really. These two values together equal 0, so I've just written it in a slightly different way. And that's going to be minus 11. So I'm going to make myself a little bit more room here. Now let's see, do I have this on the next page? I do not have this one on the next page, so I'm going to need to make a copy of this. And then I will create a new page, and I'll paste it here. So we can come back and do that one later, because for now what I want to do is make myself a little bit more room so that I can continue this example. Okay, so now that I have created my perfect square, three and now I can write this perfect square. So what is the perfect square? x squared plus 2 thirds x plus 1 ninth. That is actually x plus 1 third all squared. And then I'm going to keep that negative 1 ninth that I had from before minus 11. Now I've created this perfect square. So this perfect square is this piece right here is the same as this piece right here. So if you were to expand this out again, you would end up back here again. And now I'm going to take this 3 and I'm going to multiply it in. So the 3 times this perfect square is this. And then 3 times negative 1 ninth is the same as negative 3 over 9, which is the same as negative 1 third. And now I've expanded out this square bracket. And then I have minus 11 on the end. And so I'm going to need a common denominator with a 3. So I'm actually going to write that, this negative 11 as negative 33 over 3. And so now I'm closing in on my final form. x plus 1 third, all squared, minus a third, minus 33 thirds is minus 34 thirds. And although the question just asks you to complete the square here, you should be able to recognize that this means it has a vertex at negative 1 third, negative 34 over 3. So there's our first example. Now let's go to that second example. So now we're going to out of the first two terms, I'm going to factor out the leading coefficient of 5. That leaves me with x squared plus 8 divided by 5 is just going to be 8 over 5, x. And then that minus 3 stays out on the end by itself. Now we focus on what's inside the square bracket. So it's going to be x squared plus 8 fifths x. And then I have to figure out what to put here inside the bracket and then minus 3 stays on the outside. So the thing that goes inside here, the way I do it, is I, I start by taking 1 half of this value, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. 2 goes into itself once, it goes into 8 4 times, and now I take that value, 4 fifths, and I square it, and that gives me plus 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. So I end up with 16 over 25, but I have to subtract that same amount because I'm not allowed to make something appear out of nowhere. 
now that I've done that, I have created a perfect square. 5 bracket, the first part of that perfect square is going to be these three terms. That's the actual perfect square, those three terms. I'll leave it in the same color here. That's going to be x plus this same value, this 4 over 5 also goes here. Not 4 over 5 squared, the squared is getting incorporated into the squaring of the entire bracket. And then minus 16 over 25 minus 3. Now I'm going to expand out this bracket. Now when I say expand, I'm not going to expand this round bracket. I'm going to leave that as it is. But I am going to expand out the square bracket. So 5 times the round bracket becomes this. And 5 times negative 16 over 25. You might want to do that off to the side here if you, if you need to. 5 times negative 16 over 25. 5 goes into itself once and it goes into 16 over it goes into 25 five times so we actually end up with negative 16 over 5 here and this is going to be minus but instead of 3 I might want to put this over the denominator 5 which means multiply top and bottom by 5 so that becomes minus 15 over 5 and now I have my final step which is 5 x plus 4 over 5 all squared minus and now negative 16 minus 15 that's negative 31 over 5 which in this case now we have a vertex at negative 4 over 5 negative 31 over 5. Okay this one says to find the optimal value but when we talk about optimal value as I mentioned on the first page, that's really just is it a maximum or a minimum and what is that value? Now we can answer this first part right away because this is positive 5. This is a leading coefficient of positive 5. That means that the a value is greater than 0. If an a value is greater than 0, that means that the parabola opens up. You don't need to write this out in your own solution but you need to be able to do this in your head. It opens up, it looks like this, there's the vertex, and so which of these do we have? We have a minimum. So our optimal value is going to be a minimum. But the optimal value is also, what we're looking for here, is the y coordinate of the vertex. And so to find that optimal value, we're going to need vertex form. So let's go ahead and rewrite that five Actually, we do need to rewrite it for more than one reason, because I'm just noticing now I made a couple of mistakes there. This is not the a value, so I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to redo all of this. This is what happens when you're rushing. In my case, I'm rushing because all of my videos are too long, because I always talk too much and take too much time. So I'm rushing because I want this to be quick, but I need to slow down because I need to rearrange this first. I need to put this in order with 3x squared plus 5x plus 4. That's a big difference. Now we take a look at this. My a value is obviously less than 0. That means that my parabola opens down. So I've got something like this. And so my optimal value is going to actually be a maximum. And with my vertex with coordinates h, k, this is my optimal value. The k value is going to be my optimal value. So apologies for that detour into errors, but it's not so important whether or not you make the error. It's how you recover from it. Do you recognize it? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that negative 3 and I'm going to factor that negative 3 out of these first two terms. So that's going to give me x squared. Negative 3x squared divided by negative 3 just gives me x squared. You do have to be careful here. Positive 5x divided by negative 3 is going to be negative 5 thirds x. And then the plus 4 stays outside. Next step, 
is to identify our perfect square and write it out. x squared minus 5 thirds x. Now what is a half of negative 5 thirds? So let's do that over here. Negative 5 thirds times a half. Nothing's going to divide out there, so that ends up being negative 5 sixths. What is negative 5 sixths all squared? Notice this turns into a positive anyway. That turns into positive 25 over 36. So this is plus 25 over 36 minus 25 over 36. Close that square bracket plus 4 equals negative 3. Now I can take these parts. This is our perfect square that we're going to factor. And I'm going to rewrite this as x. Now this one has minus 5 thirds x. And the half of that was negative 5 sixths. So this is x minus 5 over 6 all squared. I still keep that negative 25 over 36 plus 4. Now I'm going to expand into this square bracket. Negative 3 times the round bracket. We just rewrite that. All squared. Negative 3 times negative. Well, that's first of all going to turn into a positive. And if you need to, you would write this over here in your rough work. But I'm going to recognize that 3 goes into 36 12 times. So that's a pretty easy common factor division. 3 goes into 36 12 times, so this becomes positive 25 over 12. Plus, now 4, I'm going to write that with a denominator of 12 instead. So I multiply that by 4, or by 12, I'm sorry, and I get 48. So now I have negative 3, x minus 5 over 6, all squared. And then 25 plus 48 is equal to 73 all divided by 12. And now in this case, the vertex is 5 over 6, comma, 73 over 12. If this is a parabola, it's got a negative leading coefficient, it opens down, so this is a maximum. It, the question actually asked us for the optimal value, and so we answer it that exact way. The optimal value is 73 divided by 12. Okay, now I mentioned earlier in the note that sometimes it's permissible and sometimes it's even preferable depending on what the algebra itself looks like. Sometimes you want to use uh, non-repeating decimals. So what do I mean by non-repeating decimals? What is two thirds? That is 0 0.66666, etc. It repeats. So there's no way for me to write this as a decimal that contains that exact information. There is this notation that many of us have learned, but we don't tend to use that, particularly when a fraction notation is available. So when I have the choice of something like that, I'm going to write that as two thirds. So what's the, what's the idea of a terminating decimal? Well, the simplest terminating decimal is 1 half. That is equal to 0 0.5. No more digits are required to express that exactly. So by writing 1 half as 0 0.5, I haven't lost any information. So if that's convenient, then sometimes we might want to do things that way. So you're going to see an example of this here. When I factor out my negative 20, my leading coefficient, now I'm of course a little bit paranoid. I make sure that this is already written in the order I need it to be in. I take out the negative 20, and that becomes x squared. I'm taking a negative out of a positive, so that's going to be minus, and then 180 minus 20 is equal to 9, and that's going to be minus 9x plus 4400 on the outside. Now we're really at this point, we're just focusing on the contents of the square bracket. x squared 
minus, now we could do this using fractions, it would be perfectly fine. So in this case, we end up with, uh, we've got 9x, so in order to complete the square, we could do negative 9. Now in this case, since it's a number, we just divide it by 2, and we take that whole thing and we square it, and when we do that, we end up with 81 divided by 4. And that's pretty awkward. It's, it's awkward to write, it might be awkward to work with. If you're comfortable with fractions, I would encourage you to go ahead and do this. This is not so terrible, but it's going to get worse when we multiply things through by 20. Won't be awful, it's doable. But another way we could do this is negative 9 over 2 is the same as negative 4.5. Dividing by 2 always results in a terminating decimal. And then we take negative 4.5 and we go ahead and square that and when we square that we end up with 20.25. Now I would expect you to go ahead and get that off of your calculator. So this is going to be, let's make sure I've got enough room here since I've done some some rough work over to the side. So this is going to be plus 20.25 minus 20.25 then I close the bracket plus 4400 equals negative 20. Now I'm going to take these three pieces and make my perfect square and this one's going to be x minus 4.5 and that's all squared and then I still have this minus 20.25 close the bracket, plus 4400. Now I expand this negative 20 into the bracket, into the square bracket, so I end up with negative 20, x minus 4.5, all squared. And now 20 times 20.25, again it depends on how comfortable you are with these things. I'm, I'm currently working without a calculator here, which always isn't always the best idea negative times a negative is a positive and then in my case I've, I know some tricks for mental arithmetic so 20 times 20 is 400 but we also have 20 times 0.25 which is a quarter of 20 which is 5 so that's actually going to be plus 405 plus 4400 so we end up with negative 20 x minus 4.5 all squared and then that's going to be plus 4805. We want to always make sure that we're checking the question to know what they're asking. In this case they want the optimal value. The optimal value is the y coordinate of the vertex and in this case that occurs at 4805. So therefore the optimal value is 4805. Okay, and that's it for this lesson. I'm sure it went longer than I wanted to, despite my rushing and making a small mistake.